One of the main lessons we have to look at in terms of Riemann sums is looking at a summation, an infinite summation, as a integral and vice versa to be able to go back and forth between different representations. Sigma notation here, this is just a basic example. If you have this Greek letter sigma, it's saying that I want from all numbers from 1 to 10, I want to just take the numbers and add them up. Or in this case, take the squares and add them up. It's a way of shorthand writing uh, rather than having to write out all these various numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3, whatever. For us, dealing with uh, rectangles and Riemann sums, it's adding up a bunch of length times width instead of making a bunch of parentheses over and over again to deal with length times width times length times width over and over again, we can use this sigma notation in its place. So here's the deal. An integral, <coughs> we're going to say, is just a sum of a bunch of rectangles. So here is a graph that we can estimate its area under the curve with a bunch of rectangles. Now what we have here is from A to B is our full width, so that means each rectangle would be a B minus A divided by N, however many rectangles that there are. And we're going to call that delta X. So what this means now is that every one of these rectangles has a width of delta X for your area width times height. The height is just based on function values. So like your first function value would be just F of A. If you went one more rectangle over, that's one width over A plus delta X in terms of what the x value is here at this function. The next guy would be a plus 2 widths, 2 delta x, all the way up to you got to the end, which would be f of b. So each time you're going over, you're adding an extra delta x. So a plus 1, then 2, then 3, some i number of delta x's. And here's what we have then as a result, is that I can take this sum from i equals 1 to our total number n of rectangles, and what we're looking at is we have a width here of delta x for each rectangle, and this function value tells you our height. And we have a different height every time based on how many intervals we've gone over, how many rectangles we've gone over. So f of your starting point plus how many intervals of delta x. So that's what a Riemann sum is. An integral, we said, though, is an infinite number of those rectangles. Because remember, infinite rectangles of small width is what makes a actual full exact area under the curve. So to change that, we just say, well, we want n to be infinite. We want it to be an infinite number. So that's the equation that we use. So the limit as n approaches infinity of this guy. So mainly what we have to do is we have to be able to go back and forth between these two different representations of using the integral symbol and using the sigma notation. <clears throat> this first problem has the integral from 3 to 5 well, of x squared. Here's how you're going to do this. First thing is that I need to have it be a limit, a limit as n goes to infinity, always. My summation will always be from 1 to n. I think the next easiest part is looking at the width, delta x. The width of the entire interval here from 3 to 5 is just 2, 5 minus 3. We're going to take that 2 and divide it by the number of rectangles, which is n. So your part at the n should be 2 over n. Now, what you should notice, though, too, delta x is 2 over n. I have a delta x in the middle as well. So I should have something that is i times 2 over n. So that's this part right here, which will be i times, maybe, 2 over n. There it is. The function itself is squared. That's why we have squared. And this a is the beginning point, the bottom of your integral symbol. That's how you construct your Riemann sum in terms of constructing what the uh, Riemann sum in sigma notation would look like. We can work on it backwards too. So I'm going to say first that I have an integral. I can easily find my starting point because that's this guy on the inside from pi. This right here tells me my width of my integral, pi over 2. So pi plus pi over 2 gets me my endpoint, which will be 3 pi over 2. So there you have your intervals. And now I'm going to have something dx. Well, what's my function here? Pretty much you're going to replace this part in parentheses with an x. And it's just sine of x dx. That's all you got to do. So if we look at this one as well, it's going to be, if I go left to right, limit as don't do what I always do naturally, just go delta x. Limit as n approaches infinity. 
the summation is from 1 to n. My function is e to the something. I'm replacing the x with this idea right here, the a plus i delta x. a is 0 plus i times, I need to figure out what delta x is. Delta x is the width, so it's going to be from 0 to 8, the width is 8 divided by rectangles, which is n. And at the end, times delta x, so times another 8 over n. That's it. If they wanted to rewrite it, limit n approaches infinity, the summation this is just going to be e to the 8i over n, all that times 8 over n. Okay, this last one down here, again, let's try working backwards on one. Start with, we have an integral. My beginning point is 1. My entire width is 14, so that means 15 for my upper limit. Something dx. The part in parentheses, again, is what's just going to become your variable, just your x in the function. So your function will be 2 times x to the third power, 2x cubed. That's it. That's all you have to do is to be able to essentially match and go back and forth between the integral notation versus the summation notation.